Good morning, grandkids. I'm still sick, so I'm not going to be over on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to be over on my Twitter channel, but I thought I had let this last chapter of the story I had written go long enough, and uh, I want you guys to hear it. I hope you'll enjoy it. And I need to get through with it, so I'm going to go lay back down. So let's see how I get through it. I might have to stop and drink some water, too. I woke up groggy, bleary-eyed, and tried to look around at the room I was in. Cheap, cheap. I could see that easily enough. I don't know what I was drinking last night, but I know I had too much of it. Where was Shadow Mirror? I got washed and dressed and left that hole in the wall. After finding a place to eat, a bite, <coughs> I started feeling better and set out toward the Jarl's headquarters. <coughs> it was about the last place I found, way up at the top of the hillside. I knew that someone called the Scheming Servant probably wouldn't be too close around the Jarl, so as soon as I entered, I started checking out the first floor rooms. I found a kitchen where a staff was cooking up some good smelling food. I inquired after the scheming servant, but no one had heard of him, at least not by that name. Farther back down a short hall was some stairs going down. It looked like to a basement. I didn't think that he entered to meet me down there. I went back and crossed the hall, going across the top of the steps I had come in. Going across the top of the steps I had come in at. Kids, you're going to find me uh, not reading this very well, I'm afraid. And started looking for him on the other side. Then I turned the corner of the hallway and saw a man sitting alone in a small room toward the back. I headed that way, hoping this would be my contact. He was a rather small man and wore what looked like a smooth leather cap on his head. I had to admit he looked weird, but this could be the man. He watched me walking toward him and then got up. Are you the assassin? He asked in a quiet voice. That would be me, I smiled. I want you to kill the big laborer at Caitlin's farm near Solitude. Here's the gold I promised and make it painful. He started walking away saying, and this meeting never took place. Then he hurried out the door. I stood there watching him leave, muttering to himself. Well, I thought here's another contract. I'll never know what it's about. I shook my head and started out the front doors, hoping I could find Shadow there somewhere. Outside the gates stood my faithful steed, his red eyes watching me. I walked up to him and gave him a pat as I hopped on his back, and he took off. His hoofs weren't touching the ground, and he was flying. I leaned over to one ear and said, I didn't tell you where to go yet. 
He rolled his eyes and slightly shook his head. I knew that was some kind of judgment against me, but I smiled as he headed straight for solitude. He's a pretty smart horse, isn't he? Time quickly passed, and we arrived <coughs> at solitude. He made the turn, headed down toward the docks, but almost immediately we were in front of Caitlin's farm. Shadow Mirror stopped, and I hopped off. This was just a small little place, not much here, so he shouldn't be hard to find. There was a woman in the yard. I assumed it was Kayla. A couple of workers were near a mill, and farther back I saw a lone man just turn the corner behind a shed. I decided to follow him. I had my knife out, but was letting it casually hang down by my side. He was bent over a garden plot, pulling out weeds. He just barely looked at me and went back to his weeding, saying, Can I help you with something? I swung my knife hard against his neck, and his head fell right off. I looked at my knife, then at him, then around me. I was stunned. I didn't realize my knife was that sharp. Well, so much for making it painful. I started up the hill. To the road above it. Shadow Mirror walked around the road and met me at the top. I hopped on and we headed for Dawnstar. It was going to be a convoluted way around from here. So I let him have his head and he flew. He always knows where he's going, don't he, guys? This other page, I don't know for some reason I thought I was supposed to be killing a female. Did I screw up? Uh, hang on, guys. <clears throat> oh, I want you to kill the big laborer. Okay. He sounded like a little small man. He didn't sound like a big laborer. All right. In a short while, we had come as far as Marthal, and I slowed the big steed down. I was, it was a beautiful day, and on its way toward evening, I just wanted to ride along and enjoy it. I could tell that Shadow Mirror felt the same way. I had to laugh at him. He was actually prancing or high-stepping or something, maybe dancing. I started thinking about Nazir and the others at the Brotherhood Sanctuary ahead. Things were going better for the Brotherhood, and it was and it was growing. But I didn't feel like I was growing or feeling better. I wondered if I could talk to Nazir about this when I got back. Would he understand? I was restless. And once in a while, I wondered what it would be like out of this business. Maybe married. What would he think about that if I ever brought it up? I had to chuckle, but what if? I was almost at Dawnstar and hadn't really been paying any attention when suddenly an arrow hit me in my right shoulder from behind. I whipped off my bow as best I could as I looked behind me. There were three burly men spread around me and closing. That arm was useless. I tried pulling the string with my left hand, which turned into a comedy of error 
tracks quickly. I was right by the camp of Khajiits and slowed my horse, hoping that they'd be able to help. They did start firing arrows at the guys, just as long, just as a long-haired, rough-looking bandit fired another arrow at me. It caught me right in the chest. I looked down at it, and I slowly fell from Shadowmere. When the bandits saw me fall, and saw all the Khajiits, they decided they'd better hightail it out of there, and took off. I lay there on the ground while the Khajiits gathered around me. Their caravan leaders squatted down beside me, asking me questions. I could barely think, not really sure yet about what happened. I finally managed to get a hold of his shirt and pulled him close. You know where the Dark Brotherhood is at, on the other end of town, I asked him. Yes, I do. It's close to the shore. I've seen its door. Could you please send a rider and get Nazir, I asked. Yes, he said, and got on a horse and took off through town. I lay there gasping, blood flowing, wondering what I was doing on the ground. The day had been so beautiful. Now it was getting kind of dark. Where's Nazir, I thought. I need you. I had started feeling the pain when I also started feeling hoof beats through the ground under, under me, fast. I saw Nazir slide off his horse and down beside me, all in one motion. My love, he almost shouted. What happened? Who did this? He snatched me up to him, looking into my eyes, looking my body over, then back into my eyes. I could tell that he was frantic and scared. I don't really know, I said. I could hear the Khajiits trying to tell him. He looked at them, then back at me. His eyes were frantic and I could see tears in them. I smiled at him and tried to lay my hand against his dear face. He grabbed it and pulled it up to his lips. I've got to get you to a shaman or someone. Someone has to help. He turned toward the others around, but I grabbed his arm, even though feebly. I love you, Nasir, I said, gazing into his eyes. Oh, gods, I love you, my dear, he cried, tears pouring from his eyes. I've loved you from when I first set eyes on you. He hugged me close, burying his face in my hair. Listen, I said. In my room are all my journals that I've been keeping through the years. I want you to take them and to read them. I will, he said with a sob. I will. Tell me that you love me, I asked. I love you with every fiber of my being, and I will forever, he whispered. Everything started fading in this year. God. I'm sorry, kids. This is sad. Everything started fading in... Nazir, my handsome Nazir, kissed me and held me to him, his tears bathing my face as my last breath. 
left me. That's the end. She died. Oh God, this is stupid. How can you cry over a story that you have wrote? I've written. Maybe it's because I'm sick. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna go with this. I don't know if I'll be able to write another story or not if it's gonna end like this. Okay, grandkids. That's the end of the listener, and I hope you've enjoyed the whole story. I won't be on my channels today. I still don't feel well. In fact, I think I feel worse than I did yesterday. But I did want you to get you out the end of this story. So I'll try to see you tomorrow if I feel better than I do today. So goodbye, grandkids.